Right, going to record my sets for Live in the Lounge for last Friday. Um, the last three weeks I've been unable to upload them after the concert. Um, I think because my phone's past it, basically. They're sort of struggling for memory and it's just not doing functions the way it should. So once lockdown's relaxed a wee bit, although everything's back into that again this week, um, I need to go in and get my phone upgraded. But anyway, this is Life in the Lounge 21 and I'm going to play the fiddle sets I played last Friday. Um, obviously, the show is not here, but um, I feel like I, I need to do it because I, I, I posted to YouTube every Friday night concert we did right through to 21 and if I didn't do this scene, I feel like I, there'll be a bit of jigsaw puzzle missing, so to speak. So anyway, I'm going to start with a couple of hornpipes. I think they're both English, probably, although their origins um, seem to be a bit obscure, but my feeling is they probably are. Um, the first is the college hornpipe, and that's followed by the trumpet hornpipe. And um, if you're of a certain vintage, you might um, mind this as the theme tune for the, the animated series Captain Pugwash. Okay. I thought I fluffed it a bit, oh, we'll just keep on going. Um, right, a um, couple of my own tunes next, followed by an Irish tune. The first thing's called Bonnie Port Soy, and Port Soy is, it is indeed a lovely fishing village in the Aberdeenshire coast, um, beautiful place, a great favourite of mine, and it was um, requested by Doreen Wood. Uh, Doreen and Melvin Wood have a, a, a house in Port Soy. Melvin had He's got family links that go way back, and although he's a minister down in Glasgow, they, they go up to Port Soy as often as they can, and um, the family and myself were there last year and had a few days exploring the coast up along that bit of Aberdeenshire, and um, I wrote that while I was there, and um, just inspired by the place, I really like it. One of my favourite favorite villages in Aberdeenshire. So Bonnie Port Soy, followed by Pennon. Um, inspired by the same wee holiday. Um, Pennon is just a bit further along the coast and um, it's just nestled at the bottom of cliffs. Um, very picturesque, dramatic, best Kent because it's um, the village in the classic movie Local Hero and um, the telephone box is still there. It's well worth going to see. It's still visited by a lot of folk and um, yeah, another favourite fishing village on the Aberdeenshire coast. So I'll play that and then I, I'm going to finish up with St Patrick's Day, which is an Irish jig. Um, not for any reason other than it just popped into my head and, and it fitted at the end. Um, so I can pretty much please myself at a place. <laughs> so that's why it's there. There's no big significance ever than I thought it went nicely. And um, this, I actually picked it up by ear many, many years ago. Well, I was in my teens. And it, it features in the John Wayne movie, The Quiet Man, which I'm not going to go into the, the, the plot, but it's, a, it's one of my favourite films. I think it, I have a feeling it probably just reminds me of Tarland. There's a lot of the scenes there reminding me as a kid of um, the How of Cremar in the village of Tarland. I think that's possibly why I'm fond of it, but I, I just think it's a great movie. Despite the Paddy Whackery and Blarney, I, I like it. So there you go. So here we go. Bonnie Pot Sorry to start.
go. I'm kind of rattling through these fairly quick. I'm, um, I think I played it the slow air we um, repeat last Friday, but I'm just wanting to get the tunes doing that I played um, straight through concert style, but I'm playing like these jigs I played once each. Right, um, another um, request that I played last week was a, a tune I wrote for a Mary Scroggy, who um, at the time was fiancé to Malcolm Duff. Malcolm commissioned me to write this tune, and um, Malcolm and his family have a, a house in Fingen. Malcolm, it's another, another minister actually, as it happens, but Mal Malcolm goes up to Fingen a lot, lot he lo loves the area. And um, so when they were getting married, he asked me to write this tune for him, and so the tune is called Mary Scroggy's Welcome to Fingen. Fingen, I suppose, what is it? It's a twin... Um, a bind and the key on the mount road. So, oh, if you're fair there, you can, but otherwise, look it up and I'm up. Finger is spelt F I N Z double M Z E A N F I N Z E A N. Finger. Curious Scottish um, pronunciation. Right, so play that for a start, and then I'm going to. Going to a spare wrote for a pal of mine called James Alexander, and it's got James Alexander of Fochabers, a great um, leading light in traditional music up in, in Murray, and um, has taught hundreds of young folk to play the fiddle and um, promoted traditional music, um, founder of the Spay Fest International Music Festival. So a great lad, James. And then we'll go into the last tune, Carn the Queen, which means the cairn of remembrance, and that's the the gathering place um, of the Fakerson clan when they went to war and the cairn is still there to this day. You can go and see it but a, a mile or so um, west of Bullmore Castle right on the banks of the river Dee. Okay. <laughs>
Karen McQueen, the Cairn of Remembrance. I was there yesterday as it happens. Um, there was a virtual um, clan ceremony was held there. So I went up and played that tune and a tune I wrote for um, Captain Alwyn Fackerson, and we're called. He's the, the current chief of the Fackerson clan. He was 100 last year. Remarkable guy. And um, so I played that last tune there yesterday. Usually there's a big gathering of folk, but um, I was just there with Dale, getting my, <laughs> getting filmed, playing him on the banks of the D by the key. So there you go. Right, I'm going to play um, a, a well, it's a Pibroch now. Um, we would have had um, some songs we shown at this point last Friday, but it's, it's just the fiddle sets. I'm going to crack on, and um, this is a tune called Dargai. And Dargai is a Pibroch that was written by James Scott Skinner to commemorate and honour the, the action of the Gordon Highlanders at the heights of Dargai in northern India. Um, in the, I think it was about 1893 or something, or thereabouts, that's maybe not quite right, but it was thereabouts anyway. And um, it was a fairly impenetrable position that the, the rebel troops were pinned down and well you can say where the rebels are with the freedom fighters mm, that's um, uh, a debate now but anyway um, the British army were trying to clear them out and there had been a couple of assaults that had failed a couple of regiments had been turned back and the Gordon Highlanders were sent forward and they were told to clear the heights and um, with the support of the Gurkhas they shot up the hill um, took heavy casualties but cleared the heights and captured him and it was such a significant affair. It was famous all over the British Empire and it was kind of news uh, and through all the newspapers. So it was brought a great deal of um, notoriety to the Gordon Highlanders. And one of the significant things that happened, there was a, the Victoria Cross was um, a, awarded to Piper George Finlater, who um, was playing with the troops going up the hill to encourage him, um, he was shot through both ankles, such was the, the heavy fire that was being direct, directed upon the troops. And um, as he lay bleeding, he propped himself up and continued to play to um, encourage the Gordons to keep on going up the hill. And so um, that was a famous incident in itself, and it's been printed by numerous artists. And um, such was his um, fame that Queen Victoria herself requested to and the Murray's medal. So, um, so this is Skinner's interpretation of that. Pibroch is the uh, kind of theme and variations uh, music, which is the, the classical music of the great Highland bagpipes. So, here we go. Dargai.
Brooks are not really things that are played much in the fiddle nowadays, although there was a tradition at one time. Um, but don't know why that was Skinner, um, Dauphinese Cup, the Gordon Highlanders, which are no more. They were am amalgamated about 1994 into the Highlanders Regiment, and it's since been amalgamated into the Royal Regiment of Scotland. So, yeah, all these famous Highland regiments are um, just about disappear altogether. Modernisation, so that's the way it goes. Right, I'm going to play a March Strasby and Real now. This is a great tune, great melody, called Glen Callid Castle, and that's going to go into Earl Grey, the Strasby by James Hill, and then finish we the Waverley Ball, which, oh, let me think. I think it's uh, Joseph Lowe, I th think. Well, anyway, it's Nate, I'm sorry, but I think it might be. Okay. tunes uh, and that set um, and that's me pretty much finished um, it only remains for me to play our finale piece um, that Shona joined me for I think last week it was um, Staten Island or Staten Island uh, well, this was an argument it wasn't so much an argument as a debate because I couldn't think and but a few folks said it was I think it's Staten Island rather than Staten Island I think I said it was Staten Island and Shona said it was Staten 
island. So you said tomato, I said tomato. Um, but I think it's starting island is the right way. So anyway, um, I hope you've enjoyed this little performance and um, be back later tonight to the Live in the Lounge 22. If you've enjoyed this, um, please feel free to donate to the tip jar. Um, I hate it obviously because I'm doing it for free anyway, but if you do, it's much appreciated and it's www.paypal.me forward slash Paul Anderson, Shona Dawn. Shona Donaldson kind of fit it in, so it's Shona Dawn at the end. So thanks very much. And um, yeah, if you're looking in the night, we'll see you later. Right, all the best folks.